Hey, how's it going guys? Lucid here. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create the Saber Impact Effect on your gun for your Valorant montages and edits. You'll also need a few plugins, one of those plugins being Twixter plugin to help achieve an uh, extra slow motion impact effect. Um, you can do it with uh, the built-in pixel motion frame blending, but it doesn't quite look anywhere near as nice as the way Twixter does it. And the other plugins you'll need is Red Giant Universe. You definitely need that one because it has uni.ecto, which is the effect that you know Ladif, um, RZCA and Rocklin use in their montages and edits. And the final one, which is optional, is BCC. Uh, it gives you a variety of effects and I personally use it and recommend it because it has a big variety of effects and options. This tutorial will be inside of After Effects but it's the exact same for Sony Vegas. If you'd like to see a tutorial for Vegas be sure to leave me a comment uh, letting me know and I'll make it Vegas tutorial. Before we start the video I just want to quickly say that I do upload regular Valorant content so if you are interested in that consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future content. And With all that being said let's begin the video. Now that you guys are inside of After Effects, the first thing you want to do is either find a clip that you want to uh, do the impact on or just drag in your clip. And drag it into the project bin on the left side of your screen. If your layout doesn't look the same as mine, uh, what you guys can do is you can uh, go up to Window, go to Workspace and click All Panels and it should reset it to this view. Otherwise, uh, there should be an, an option under View somewhere, I'm just not exactly sure where it is. Anyway, once it's here, you guys can drag it straight onto the timeline to create a new composition. You can rename it if you want to. The first thing we want to do is we want to go to composition settings. And now you need to know uh, what FPS your clips are. If you film with 30 FPS clips, you want to make your composition 30 FPS. If you film with 60 FPS, you want to make your composition 60 FPS. And so on and so forth for uh, 120 FPS. So my clips are 60 FPS, so I'm going to make the frame rate 60 FPS for this composition. Now. The first thing that you want to do with your clip is you want to find uh, the part that you get your kill and that you want to put uh, do the impact on. So mine is right here. What you can do is you can click Control Shift D and delete this excess layer over here that you don't want or you can just make that the start of the clip by clicking Alt and the left block bracket that just makes it the start of the film. It's uh, above the enter key and then you want to go after your kill and for me that's roughly here and I want to click alt and the right uh, block bracket I don't know what, they, what they're called but you know what I mean and uh, so I've got this perfect se segment here of uh, my uh, where I want to apply the impact effect to so what the first thing you want to do is you want to go and find uh, you want to go one frame into the kill so I'm going to zoom in here you can press uh, the plus and minus key next to your backspace key or you can just use the mountains down here at the bottom of the screen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get as close as I can to the kill which is roughly there zoom in and you want to go click control and your left or right arrow to go one or two frames ahead or backwards so I'm going to go like I said uh, all the way back until one frame into the kill which is right here and you'll see why in just a moment so go here and you want to click control shift D uh, to split the layer and then drag it to the bottom now we have uh, this segment here, this top track at the moment is going to be uh, leading up to the kill so this is going to be normal speed uh, like, like in a montage and then when you get the kill you want it to be slow motion you want that uh, effect that let if and the rest uses so what you want to do here is you want to apply uh, let's say about that far as where we want the slow motion so we can cut off the edge of this do that really quickly then you want to go over to your effects panel and type in Twixter Pro like I said in the beginning of the video and you want to drag that onto this clip here not the top one but the one that has the kill okay so this bit gets a little bit tricky but it's um, not too hard to follow it so what you want to do is you want to go um, to the edge or make your drag your play here to the beginning of the clip where you get the kill and you want to click control and your left arrow to go backwards one frame now we're going to come over to the Twixter Pro. Make sure you click in FPS is out FPS. Uncheck that and make it your FPS. So my input FPS is 60 FPS because that's the FPS of my composition and my clips. So I'm going to change that to 60. If you film in 30 or 120, change that to you know your FPS depending on what your clips are filmed in. So now once you, you're here, what you want to do is you want to go to speed and you want to uh, make a keyframe for speed one frame before the start of the video 
and I'll show you why that's uh, important in just a moment. So basically if you were to go uh, and just change the beginning of this clip to have uh, like one speed it would uh, play it at a random point in time. You can see it doesn't play at, at the point where we want the kill so that's why we need to go one frame backwards from the clip and make it uh, 100 and then one frame forward which is where we get the kill and make that either 3, 5 or 1. I find to use 3 the most, occasionally 5 if there's not much movement in the clip but Ladif and um, RZCA uses uh, 1 because it means that they have to, um, what do you call it, mask uh, less of the gun because the gun is still a longer as you can see right here. It, uh, Twixter generates more frames but you can see the gun is literally like not even moving, it's basically a still clip and I can drag that through most of the clip and you won't really see much movement at all. All you see is the character's blood moving right in the center of the screen there. Anyways, so once you've done that, we've got uh, essentially the entirety of the clip slowed down to one speed. Um, so like I said, if you do choose to do three speed because you want more motion, that is fine, because that's what I do, and uh, it, it looks a little bit better I reckon because there's more motion, it doesn't look like you took a screenshot and added effects to a screenshot. But it sometimes does mean, if you have uh, a lot of gun movement, it means you'll have to mask more frames of the gun. So for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it at 1, just, just so I can show you guys how to do it. So now that we have added Twixter to this layer, what we want to do is we want to duplicate it. So now what, what duplicating is going to do is it's going to create two of these, uh, of this, uh, this killing scene. It's going to create two of them, and what, what's going to happen is we're going to mask out the gun of, the, of this one on top. So basically, uh, when we add the effect, we want the effect to only be applied to the gun. We don't want it to be applied to the rest of the uh, the kill because it's going to distort and it just doesn't look nice on the video. So that's why this one, we mask out the gun on the top one here and then we leave the background alone and then we have added the effect to the masked layer so that only the gun has the effect, if that makes sense. If this doesn't quite make any sense, uh, it will in a, um, in a minute. So now what we want to do is we want to go, make sure you're selecting this top um, layer, the one that we want to mask, that it has to be the top one because um, the gun is, has to be on top of the footage when we mask it. So now we want to go up to the pen tool, uh, remembering that we're pressing this, uh, this top layer of the kill scene. And now we want to zoom in and we want to mask the gun. So I'm going to do... Um, if you guys can, if you, if you have a strong enough PC, I'd recommend putting this on full so you have uh, more detail in your uh, masking. But if you don't, that's fine. You can put it on half or quarter. It just makes it a little bit more difficult and less precise to mask. So basically, here you can, I'd recommend changing the color of your mask when you place it down because uh, sometimes it can blend in and it doesn't stick out and it's, you know, it's just hard to uh, trace around a thing. So I'm just going to change it to a red because that sticks out quite nicely. Oops, that is nice. And now that when I tr uh, mask it, it looks quite nice and precise. And now I'm going to go around here really quickly. You don't have to, well, when you do this, um, make sure you be precise because, you know, the people can see mistakes if you go ahead and rush it and leave big spaces. You, you want to keep it as close as you can to the hand, not, in, uh, not inside of the gun, but not outside, just, just on the edge because the thickness of the effect should cover uh, the edge of the gun. Um, if you're going around uh, edges of um, hands, uh, you need to remember that you, there, you can click down and then hold to like add curvature to your mask. This is good for going around like the um, like scope of a, a sniper or anything like that. I don't really use it, I just make sure I go around it multiple times like this. And make multiple different points, but it does mean there's more work if you have um, have to re-mask your gun. You have to move more points around. But anyway, um, just go. Around. I'm just going to go around here and speed through it really quickly, so you guys can see what the mask should look like. Another quick tip for you guys to remember is that if you go ahead and edit one of these past uh, little pivot points here and you wonder why when you uh, click over here to uh, start masking the rest of the gun it starts a new mask that's because you uh, haven't clicked to the most recent point so if you go back and edit one of these you need to remember to click the most recent point and then begin masking and make sure that it updates the uh, original mask, the primary mask
Now we have the first keyframe of the mask done. So what we want to do is we want to go, we can mute this bottom layer and also uh, mute the audio of the both tracks because you will add SFX generally to a montage and edit because the in game sounds, you can sometimes hear people's mics and all the rest and it kind of ruins the montage. So I prefer to turn it off and um, add additional sounds just to keep it a lot more crisp and clean. Anyway, so you want to go to the track that we're editing, which is this top track, and we want to go down to mask, click mask path and keyframe this first mask. You can see this little diamonds appeared right here on this uh, on the beginning of the clip. So basically it's showing that at the beginning of the clip this is the mask for the gun that we want. And then we want to scrub through with the by grabbing the playhead through the footage and see if um, our uh, mask, while staying select on this, uh, if the gun stays within the mask. Because uh, we set it to 1% speed you can see that there's literally no movement. Like you can see very lightly uh, that the gun moves inside the mask. If you guys did have a uh, moving gun, you would just go along here and go to the point where it changes and uh, edit the mask path by clicking the layer and just changing around these little points like this. And you can see it makes another little diamond. So basically what that's going to do is say I have to move the gun around because it comes out of the mask. I have to change the mask. And you go back here and you scrub through and you can see that the when the gun moves, the mask moves with the gun if you happen to have a moving gun, which is handy so that you always are only capturing the gun and nothing else. But since mine is essentially still, I don't need to do that. You can see it stays in the mask the whole time. So now, with that all done, what we can do is we can close out of that. It's not important anymore. And we can add the uh, first effect to the gun. So the first thing we want to add is uni.ecto. It's a red giant effect, and like I said in the beginning of the video, you need that to do this effect. There is other ways of doing it, but this is what Ladif and RZCA and Rockland use. Now, we masked out this top track because we wanted just the gun, and now we want to apply this effect to just the gun, which would mean we have to add it to this top layer. So let's drop that on there. And you can see, if we enable this bottom track, it has applied it to only the gun, which is exactly what we wanted, which is awesome. Now, the next thing we want to do is um, uh, add BCC colors or um, some sort of color uh, effect. I don't know I've met too many off the top of my head, but I, like I said in the beginning, the BCC mixed colors is an awesome uh, effect to uh, add a bit of color to your gun. And this is what, like I said, uh, Ladif and the rest use, so yeah. So once you added uh, BCC Mix Colors, you can go down to Apply Mode, and uh, I know that Ladif uses Screen. It doesn't look the nicest; it's a bit bright. You can change, you know, the the brightness and all the rest uh, for your gun, and you know, change it to however you want. Uh, but I prefer to either put it on Overlay or uh, like Multiply. Multiply is usually a bit dark, so I just put it on Overlay most of the time because Overlay is like the perfect mix between color and brightness, in my opinion. And now what you guys want to do is you want to mark around with all these settings. Literally play with any of them, change them however you want. And that's the thing about editing. You just play with the settings and come up with your own style and, and presets for a certain effects. And that's what makes you a unique editor. So just feel free to come down here and just, you know, play with these settings until you get like a really nice, uh, you know, um, style. So you can see changes the mutation, changes what colors are on screen, which is really nice. So I'm going to change it to... This one, this is quite nice. It has a mix of green, pink, and a bunch of other colors. So that's about it for BCC Mix Colors. Just remember, just muck around and be original, you know, just come up with your own styles. And now for Uni.Ecto. So you can see adding BCC Mix Colors or any color gradient uh, effect to the gun mask will change the outer glow of the uh, Ecto effect. So what you can do is if you want to change the color to, say, uh, yellow like I did in one of my montages, you want to change the inner color to the brightest because that's where the glow comes from. It comes from the inner color, so that wants to be the brightest of your color. So say say you pick blue, you need that to be a very light blue for the first uh, little color here. So I'll use yellow for an example. We want yellow nice and bright. And then the outer color is like an orangey gold. We want that a little bit darker than the um, the inner color because it's the glow. It Yeah, it just all makes sense. So I'm going to change that to... That, that looks quite nice. You can see there, that looks awesome. 
and then what you guys can do is you can animate this mask as well which uh, is seen in I don't think Lidif's used it yet but I used it in one of my most recent most recent ones and um, the way you guys can do that is by going to no it's mask sorry so what you want to do is you want to change the uh, width and all the rest so what I do is I change uh, this one you gotta move around you see this little dot in the middle here you want to change that and make it at uh, locate it to the point of your gun. So I'm going to quickly do that here. Okay, basically go to there, change the width so it's nice and small. There we go, click enable mask and then what it will do is it will go to that point that we uh, just located. So if we change that around you can see that the effect follows the uh, that point. So I'm going to put it right to the tip of the gun and change the height and width to very small and then you want to keyframe this, so go into your effects, go to uni.ecto, go to mask, and make sure you um, keyframe the width and height, because that's the two settings that we're playing with, and probably position for the first keyframe. And now, what we want to do is during uh, the duration of the clip, we want it to animate. We want to have that uh, glow uh, flow through the rest of the gun. So find out where the ending of your clip is it's right here for me so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a quick little keyframe by pressing the star symbol on the your keyboard it adds a little frame so I know that that's the end of the clip and so what you want to do is you want to make sure that the animation is finished by roughly halfway through the clip so halfway through the clip is roughly here make another keyframe and we want it to finish the first half has to be done here and then the last half is done there so go to this first keyframe go down now we want to change this width and height to make it fill half the gun so let's do that we can see that's way too much you drag that a little bit more the width doesn't seem to be doing anything that's roughly half the gun all right, now we want to go to halfway where we want it to completely finish uh, animating around the gun. We can just change height to full because that uh, animates the full gun. Perfect. So now if we play that through, we can see it animates quite quickly. You can slow that down if you want by just spreading out these keyframes right here, dragging them a few frames this way and that one a few that way. And you can see that it's a little bit slow, it looks quite clean. And yeah, that's about it, guys. That is how you use uh, the Ladif slash um, RZCA, Rocklin, whatever you want to call it, uh, impact effect in your montage. And this is uh, what it looks like when it's finished. Let me just put this in the middle of the screen for you guys. It's quite nice. And if you put this um, with a beat drop or anything like that, it uh, it fits perfectly and makes uh, your montage flow so much better because, uh, you know, as the beat hits, you have this uh, glowing effect, which is awesome. I could um, add more BCC if I really wanted to. And yeah, that's, that's really it. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. If you did enjoy, uh, be sure to drop me a big thumbs up below and leave me a comment. Uh, with anything you guys want me to do a tutorial on next and if you guys want me to do the Sony Vegas tutorial for uh, the same effect be sure to drop me a comment down below for that and yeah I'll do that as well with all that being said I really hope you guys did enjoy if you did be sure to stick around for more Valorant content my name is 60 Hertz Lucid and I'm signing off